Bird. And this is a No Excuses Ladies Show, episode number 43. Welcome to the show. I am your host. So this show is for all of you out there who are looking to better yourself and discipline, energy, confidence, and want to stop making the excuses that prevent you to being your own best self in the mind, body, and business area. So I help women to become bold in these areas so they can make bold moves and become more congruent with their mission. But again, this show is for everyone. For those of you who are a badass or who would like, would like to become a badass in real life and stop making the excuses. Because this, this, this show is all about the no excuses mindset, right? Because no excuses... If you have, if you live with, with the excuses, it's going to prevent you to become a better version of you. And life is all about becoming the best version of you, right? So this show is based on how my freak family and how we live, but also based on client stories. So if you, if you are interested, stay tuned, stay with me because I'm going to give you some awesome tips. So now going back to to last week last week we were talking about awareness thank you guys thank you for showing up and joining me we were talking about awareness last week well two weeks ago but today i'm gonna be talking about episode number 43 i'm gonna be talking about how to permanently lose weight this is for women or men it doesn't matter so stay tuned take some notes save this video in your favorite videos and of course you can follow me on youtube channel in my, you can click the link in, bio, in my bio. You, we have the YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, but we also have the Peak Physique YouTube channel that you can find hundreds and hundreds of workout videos there. So I'm sure you're gonna find something amazing in there. But let's do this. So how to permanently lose weight and become better, better in your mind, in my mindset, in your body, right? How to achieve that next level. But I have a question before we're going to start. What has been number one thing that prevented you from being the best version of you, from losing weight? What is the number one thing that stops you? Because this is very, very, very important. You need to establish this. What is it? What kind of excuse you have that stops you from losing the weight? Or what's going on in your life that you're going always back and forth in your in your life? Like that you lose the weight, gain the weight. Or maybe some of you have never achieved the best, best weight loss possible, best weight goal possible. You've never felt amazing in your own body. Please let me know. I would love to hear from you. I would love to see your answers. Because there is something. And if you have not established this yet, yet you've been struggling and you've been so unhappy and so miserable in your own skin, you need to sit down today, not tomorrow, not the next week. You need to sit down today and ask yourself, why am I the way I am today and I, why I cannot permanently lose weight? Oh, I see Trisha and Eric. I see a bunch of you. Pamela, I see a bunch of you guys coming in. So let me know what is it. Put down in the comments below and let me know what is it. Now, if you are in the best shape, put down the comments below. What do you do to stay in the best shape? Because we all learn from each other and somebody might have an awesome, amazing idea or something that they've done that will wow you. That will be the aha moment. Wow, I did not do that. In the meantime, I'm going to be going over the tips that we have accumulated. I have accumulated over 20 years experience. For those of you who do not know, we had a very, very successful physical locations in New York. With, we trained over 25,000 people. And our research was based on these people and ourselves, what we've been doing. And we have been in a top shape for in our lives for many, many years. The only not top shape I would say was during my pregnancy, but I still was training. I still was doing the things. I went through both pregnancies, two C-sections, 
and anorexia when I was a very young girl. So a little bit about me. I went through the struggles and I found a way to stay, stay in that green zone, like Steve always say, staying in the green zone. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. So stay tuned because this is good knowledge. This is knowledge, not something that just uh, somebody thought in, in the next fair, past few months. This is a knowledge that has been there for many, many years. Grab a pen and paper, stay with me, make some comments, write it down, and let's go. So we're going to start with uh, from the very, very, very top. After you answer those questions, we're gonna. I'm gonna give you uh, uh, just a recent talk that I had with someone that was um, sending me messages about weight loss. This was a woman, a woman in her 40s. We're not gonna be giving details, but I'm just gonna give you an overall idea. She has been always going through back, like back and forth. A yeah, effect yo-yo. That's what it is. When you lose and you and you gain. When you lose and you gain, and all your life, think about what a destruction you do on your mind, on your body. What a permanent damage you do to your body because you're not losing a muscle. You, you're losing a muscle, not the fat during those times when you go up and down. And more and more you do of this thing, more and more fat you accumulate. And this is actually a fat that I have right here with me. Look what a chunky and nasty piece that is. Don't think that I just pulled this out of my body. This is a fake thing that represents a real thing. It's heavy, it's five pounds, and it's disgusting. So five pounds of fat when you lose, this is how it's going to look like, guys. Some of the people have accumulated and keep this in their stomach. And some of them, they keep that in different parts of their bodies. But the point is, why I wanted to discuss this with you today. Because enough is enough. A lot of people wear stay time, and this is exactly what the story is. This woman is over 40, and all her life is a bottle. A bottle of feeling good a little bit and then feeling awful. Of 40 years, well, maybe less because let's put it this way, in the first few years of her life, she wasn't like this. But 30 years living like this, that's not living. That's being trapped in a prison of your own body. But who is responsible for your own body, guys? Let's take the responsibility. Today. Who is it? It's not your husband, it's not your spouse, it's not your neighbor, your kids, it's you. It's you. And who is taking responsibility today? You, a lot of times you say somebody else, not me. And that's the problem. And that was the problem that, that the lady has. I, uh, she was so thrilled by the talk because we dive deep and we peel the layers and we spend half an hour, maybe 40 minutes on talking. And then her answer was, I will, I will ask my husband. I said, wait a second, hold on. So you, you need to ask your husband for permission to invest in your body. Guys, if you do that, you have it all wrong. So she was going to ask the husband if he is allowing her to invest in her own body because she's been so miserable. And then she tells me he's supportive. Your other partner has nothing to do with you. You are the person that needs to take charge. And if you want to lose weight, you need to lose weight. You don't need to ask anybody for permission. And a lot of women has it wrong. They ask other people for permission. They ask husband, spouse, whatever, whoever there is to allow them to change. So let's start with number one, taking responsibility for you, that this is your own body, this is your own life, because what if, wait, wait for this, what if, if he says no? What if this person says, no, I don't want you to invest. We're going to buy a couch or we're going to buy a house or we're going to, we have payment on a car. Everybody has some payments. What if they're going to say no and you're going to say, oh, okay, so we're just going to buy a house, but I'm just going to become miserable and overweight on my life. Take charge, take responsibility. This is number one. If you're going to do this, you're going to feel much better. Because let me tell you, because once you're going to feel it's up to you to do that and no one else, you're going to be in charge of doing the next steps. Because if you're not going to start there, it's going to be very difficult for you. 
you're going to be doing and looking for the next thing, available thing on the market. Another weight loss pills, another diet. It does, it will never go. It will never work. So stop, be, stop making the excuses today. Don't hide behind someone. Make a decision. Say, I am in charge of my life and I can do this. So making the decision. If you are miserable in your own skin, you got to say, okay, I'm going to make the decision. I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to get to the bottom of very deep things. So stay with me because I'm going to be revealing really the points that you need to do step by step. Number three, we're going to create a time on your calendar that you need to work out. You have to, because most women will go by, uh, okay, I will, they start the day and they just think what time they're going to work out later. No, 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 no. The night before, you know exactly what time you're going to be working out. There's no such a thing the next day. It's it, tonight, you know what's happening tomorrow, okay? Because if you're planning the next day, it might be too late. Things might come out. You might have other things that it's not going to happen. Like today, already last night, I knew it, that my workout's going to be today at 6 a.m. And the reason for it is because my son, who is 10 years old, uh, he asked me to work out with him. I kind of help him to adjust the calendar. Why? Because t today they have earlier dismissal and I need to go for parent teaching conference, right? So I have to meet with the, with the uh, teachers and we have a plan how we're going to do this. So that would let us to either not work out or maybe I would have time, but he wouldn't. So I figured we can do it together and that's how you plan and that's how you do it. So time of your workout has to be on the schedule. Number four, get rid of everything bad in your pantry, guys. We have to do this. So if you have unhealthy snacks, either you can donate them. It's time of giving thanks. You can donate to poor people you, or you can pack it and put it somewhere that you're not going to take it. Lock it in a room, something, but it has to be out of sight, out of mind, especially in the beginning of the journey. Okay. And what I mean by that, all refined sugars, people tell me, okay, can I have uh, honey and other things? No, no molasses, no honey, guys. Those are all sugars that should not be next to you. Okay. You're gonna, you're gonna, number five, you're gonna ask for support as well. You're gonna let people know that you're doing this. Now, some people will not be helpful. Some people will try to distract you. Some people will say, you look great. You don't need that. You can just tell them, listen, this is what I'm doing and I need your support with this. And I would strongly suggest you to talk to your people at your household so they are aware of this and they will not be teasing you at least in the beginning. Because let me tell you, if you're going to continue doing what I'm telling you today, you're going to have such a thick skin and you're going to build a, such a resistance that you will be going by unhealthy foods and you're not going to even want to try it. But that's a strong will. And a lot of people can do this, but it's a practice. And it can happen to anyone. It can happen with everyone, guys. So uh, stay with me. Do not search for diets. This is number six. Because diets don't work. A lot of people, like, think about it. If you have been struggling with weight loss, I guarantee you that you have tried at least few of them. At least few diets. And I know this. I know this from studies. I know this from being an experienced fitness coach and trainer for over 20 years with our amazing uh, training facilities. We've trained many, many people. And I know this, that you've tried. Because nobody ever feel good being overweight. So you've tried. And because you've tried and it didn't work or worked for a while, you give up. And probably right now you're thinking a lot of people like, why you don't want to start the next thing? Because a lot of people are afraid. The afraid factor stops them from start starting something new a lot of times. Even though they, they might believe inside, oh, this will work, but I will not start because of the failure that... Nothing never worked permanently. And that's why, and that's why you might be feeling like, okay, I will not start another thing because I'm going to fail. Or you're already worried about things that you need to forget from eating even, changing your habits. 
and you think already ahead of time, oh, wow, I'm going to lose this. I'm not going to be able to do something. I, I have to change all my life. There's a lot of factors involved and you, try, and you start being overwhelmed, right? So think like this. What I'm telling you today, it's a lifestyle. You can completely change your life, how it changed many, many people's lives, and you continue like this. You don't give up. You don't let outside distractions, obstacles, uh, some difficulties, uh, losing someone, uh, uh, change what you learn today. That's very important, okay? So how are we going to break up the uh, break up with sugar? What are we going to do? So there will be a pattern and there will be something that we're going to do step by step. So we're going to start overall we're going to start with eating fruits only in the morning. If you have a mood to eat a fruit, eat one fruit in the morning. A grapefruit, it's a great starter. Okay? Don't eat fruits throughout the day. Fruits are meant to be eaten on empty stomach. This is very important. Okay? Day one or day two. Day three and four, we're going to be getting rid of sugar. Number eight, we're going to go and eat breakfast. Okay? Breakfast should consist of some good protein. Now, you can check my videos on my YouTube channel and see what recipes I have. I have hundreds of different recipes that can help you what to eat for breakfast. can start from simple egg whites with some vegetables. We can have protein shake uh, that it's made out of almond milk, not regular milk, not fruits, because if you're going to start adding fruits, it's going to be bomb with sugar. You don't want that. You want to concentrate on eating protein because protein will make you feel full. Number nine. Now, you're going to be eating every two to three hours. Why every two to three hours? Because you want the insulin level to be stable. You don't want to go through ups and downs. So every two, three hours will create that fat burning zone. And that's what you want. Most women do not do that. And the reason for it is because they run around, they forget how to eat. But once you want to train your body to eat every two, three hours, and the beginning might be hard. And I was just talking recently to a friend of mine who was trying to lose weight and she even said that it's so hard because she, she trained her body not to eat and because you have not been eating enough enough your body is pretty much just storing on the fat it's been struggling for so long that it's like holding on to the fat and say please don't starve me please don't starve me and it's holding on to that nice chunk right here it's not going to let go till you're going to break the pattern. I just want to be very clear on this. Guys, we will not let go till you change the pattern if you've been starving. And don't tell me about all these um, about permanent, um, you know, starving uh, days and not eating. I've tried this uh, for a day. If you are a person that it's a great a health great body and you want to add something to it just to train yourself train your will go to the next level that's a different story but a person that's been starving i would never recommend doing any kind of additional starvation and not eating or doing these intermittent fasting it's not for you you need to boost your metabolism so every two three hours you might be thinking okay but what am i gonna be eating so the next point is not starve do not starve because if you're going to be starving, this is exactly what's going to happen. So think of this. When cravings comes and you want to reach for something, I want you to start reading the ingredients. On the back of each product, there is an ingredient panel. It's a nutritional info. You're going to eat, the, read the ingredients. And when you eat something bad, I want you to ask yourself, how are you feeling? How this is making me feel? Think about, be very tuned to your body if you eat something not good. Because that's important. Create a food timeline. And what I mean is there is always an emotion associated with eat, eating. Why we wanted to eat something sweet? Because you want to change your emotional state. That's what it is. Changing emotional state. Think about it. You're hungry. You're starving. And because you're starving, your brain, your body will be will try to reach for sweets because your insulin level is low. So how are you going to pick yourself up from eating sugar? And that's the dangerous zone. We eat to change our emotion. Remember this. And once you're going to tune into this, you're going to be so free from this because 
you're going to be like, oh, I want to change emotion. That's why I want to eat something not healthy. So keeping that green zone when we talk about it, eating every two, thousand, two three hours in protein, uh, like egg whites, chicken, fish, you know, seafood, protein shakes, protein bar will keep you in the zone. Yes, so write down the kind of emotion that you have associated with the food exactly at the time you wanted to eat that food. Write it down, think about it. What is it? That's important. Uh, you know, because those are really a trigger emotions that are in us. And once you're going to overcome the trigger, which I talk about triggers in some other episodes, you going to become really, really confident in reacting to it okay now if you have kids if you have kids please do not finish what your kids are not eating because that's another problem women pick they pick with the kids didn't finish something a sandwich or something they eat after them so please do not do that number 14 do not snack when making dinner guys i've seen this all the time and i talk always to my to my clients do you snack when you create when you make food? It's different to try, but when women, you probably heard this. Sometimes women making food, and by the time she finished eating, making the food, she's already full. That happened. So don't do that. Don't make that mistake because you have no knowledge of how much calories you consume. You don't even know, and you you asking yourself why why am I not even hungry? Right. Drink a gallon of water, guys. This is important. You see me sipping on water, and I want you to do the same. Because water is weight loss. We are made out of water. Without water, you cannot, you cannot lose the weight. And this is a problem for many women that they cannot lose the weight because they don't drink water. I've had clients, usually clients that are very overweight, some of them are obese, that could not lose the weight. They were barely drinking water. So... Add this to your to-do list today. Now, let's go over nutritional breakdown. 50, 25, 25. I'm going to go outline in this what it means. 50% of your daily intake should come from protein, 25 from fats, 25 from carbohydrates. That's a general idea. If you're going to have a little bit more of this, that's good. But people that are really need to lose weight, they should keep that. And we dive deep in my coaching sessions because my coaching sessions are not just about food and nutrition. I do mind, body, and business. We need to connect it all. You are in some kind of a business. Maybe you are a stay-at-home mom and this is your business. If you work for someone, that's your business. If you are an entrepreneur, that's your business. If you showing up in your in your body and not in a good way, how can you run a successful company? What's the point of building an empire if you cannot lead through starting with yourself? Okay? So we we're gonna deep dig deep down in my coaching session so you like what you hear you're gonna send me a message today we can schedule a talk or you can go into the, my bio and click on the link and schedule a talk okay but right now we need to go into deeper deeper moments of scheduling and how are we gonna track this in my fitness file one of the apps that are free this is easy okay now you should be eating a lot of greens, guys. A lot of people don't eat enough vegetables, okay? Greens are have so much fiber that will keep you full because we should be eating about 25 grams of fiber a day. Most women don't do that. Fiber is weight loss, okay? There are different fibers, but the ones that I'm talking about coming from greens. So um, if you have a mood for a lot of fruits, you know what you can get? You can peel the fruit because in peels is the highest amount of fiber. And this is what I learned from my 98-year-old great-great-grandma who was in the top shape at age 98. She shared with me a lot of tips and she was absolutely amazing. Doing workouts at 5 a.m. in the morning, staying fit and healthy and dying at the age of 98, not because of unhealthy, unhealthy lifestyle, but because she fell and broke her hip. So... Let's move on. Know you're seven. You're ready for this. I'm going to go fast. So stay tuned. Pay attention. Focus on what I'm saying. How many calories per serving? How many servings per container? How much fat, sugar, carbs, sodium, 
is in your serving. So make sure that you know this. Again, how many calories in, in the serving? How many servings per container? Okay. How much fat, how much protein, sugar, carbohydrates, and sodium is in one serving? You grab a pack of chips and there is 10 servings. In the meantime, you're going to eat the whole pack. If you're going to be honest with yourself, you're going to see and read the labels. That's what we talk about in the very beginning of this talk, that you need to be honest and like look at this stuff, okay? Wherever you go, take with you protein shakes, take with you protein bars, take with you protein chips like Quest, wherever you go. You guys have to have it. You need to be prepared. We always talk about preparation, not in your only body, but your mind, your business. That's what we teach you. You need to be prepared. All right. We are uh, at number 19 right now. Have a protein shake before you go to bed. This is going to increase your calories burned throughout the night because believe it or not, you're not, no, not your body burns calories. You breathe. Your functions are still there. It's just rest, right? So you're still burning calories. I've been checking recently how many calories I burned throughout the night and I go between 300 to 450 calories. Uh, last night I burned 430 calories while sleeping. And why? Because I went full on a protein shake to, when I went to sleep. So I speed up the metabolism, that resting metabolic rate, you want to be higher. But you're not going to do this by eating sugar before you go to sleep. Pure protein shake, just regular protein shake is a way to go. I want you to pay, pay internal, like pay attention to your internal dialogue that you have with food. Some people, you know, you might think, oh my God, this is a lot. This is, I'm busy. How am I going to do this? You will. If you want to lose weight, you will. You're going to be asking yourself, okay, is it how, what am I saying to myself? What is the internal talk? What is the internal dialogue? Because what it is, it's just one small thing at a time. One small habit at a time. One small decision at a time. Like yesterday, you know, I was hungry and I'm like looking at the shake and I'm thinking, we all have the same dialogues. That's the thing, guys. I want you to understand we all are humans. We are very alike. We are identical. It's just other people are successful because they choose that better dialogue. I will drink this shake because this will gonna prevent me from eating and grabbing something bad, okay? So uh, what else? How you cook? Number 21, we are already at number 21. Learn the tips how to cook uh, without a really excess amount of calories. Use sprays, use stevia, supplement powders, uh, regular flour with protein because that's gonna lead you to weight loss. So I'm gonna be preparing an amazing carrot cake that's made out of protein, has some raisins, has some stevia, but instead of flour, I'm gonna make that protein cake for my kids and we all can have a piece, but it's made out of protein. So learn the tips. You don't know how, check my YouTube channel. You can log in and check the recipes. It's a lot of them there, okay? So number 22, Really, at the end, once you're gonna go into weight loss, avoid, avoid sugar at all costs because sugar will create another sugar craving. And I guarantee you, after seven days of you not eating sugar, you're gonna be so blocked off and feeling good and feeling the amazing energy. It, the study has been done that when you re relieve yourself from sugar, the energy level goes up so high that you feel absolutely amazing. So that's how you're going to build that confidence. Just one step at a time, one better decision at a time, one preparation at a time. That's what it takes because cons consistency, consistency, build your confidence. Consistency, build your confidence. You're not going to show up confident in life just like this. Through habits, through challenges, through going over these steps, you're going to build that confident you. Okay, it's not gonna happen overnight. But remember, why sometimes you don't see, you see a friend and then out of nowhere, you see a few months later, you see this and they lost a lot of weight. The work was done behind the scenes. Maybe you saw them for an hour and you saw them not eating and you're thinking, oh, this person is starving. 
or maybe you sell them and they went for actual something bad, but you don't know what they did for the next 23 hours. The work is done behind the scenes. And even if the results don't show res immediately, out of nowhere, you're going to step on the scale and it's going to be 10 pound weight loss because you've been consistent and you've been doing that work. So it's not a lifestyle. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. This is what I show you, but it's not it's something that you can implement every single day, right? It's not a lifestyle if you're not doing every day, but it's all about creating the habit because we are about habits, guys. Human beings, think about it. You get up and you, you brush your teeth. You brush your teeth in the morning and at nighttime. This was a habit that your parents taught you. So why not to learn the good habits of eating healthy and exercising? Like we put on the schedule a time block for your exercise. And that's building a healthy lifestyle. And all of these steps that I showed you today, anyone can do it. Anyone. But you need to make a decision, not, not ask anyone for permission, and believe, believe that you figure it out. That along the way, there will be obstacles, but you're going to go over them and you're going to.